This video was uh, the result of some requests I got on YouTube to see what controls my uh, signal collection. As you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of equipment in the cabinet that does all of the control. Um, I'll go over some of the equipment briefly. I won't get into too much detail because it'd be way too long of a video. But uh, I'll highlight some of the key components in the cabinet. Starting up here at the top, the top shelf. This is an Iteris video processor card. This takes in the live video pictures coming from the camera and processes the uh, video for detection. So when this, more or less when this uh, piece of equipment sees a change in the video picture, it will send a command to the controller unit to uh, place a call for that phase. So um, that's basically what this does. It's got two, this particular card's got two video inputs so you can hook up two separate cameras. They've made a model that's single input and I believe there's a quad input for four cameras. So that's uh, the Iteris video card. It takes in the uh, video input and then it's fed into this device, which is the traffic signal controller. This uh, is basically the brain of the operation here that does all of the timing and the programming for uh, the intersection or, or the display in this case. Um, power for the detector rack, this uh, entire rack up here, and the controller unit as well as the rest of the cabinet is uh, fed in through here which has uh, several different voltages uh, output to the cabinet. 24 volts operates the uh, back panel which we'll get to. Um, 12 volts uh, DC operates the uh, detector rack and then there's an output for AC. 12 volt AC power which is uh, typically used for the crosswalk buttons out in the field. So um, the controller unit, like I said, does all of the timing and the programming um, of, the, of the intersection and uh, all its commands and programming is fed into this device over here. This uh, piece of equipment is called the malfunction management unit and its sole purpose is to make sure that you won't have a uh, conflicting display on the uh, on the roadway. Um, for example, you can't have north-south and east-west green at the same time. Um, if that uh, output occurred, the malfunction management unit would trip the uh, cabinet and put it into flash until a technician came out to reset the uh, intersection. So. Another neat thing about the malfunction unit is you can also, this particular unit, can uh, you can check live voltages. So you can check if you have a short or, or other uh, electrical related issues. This device down here, this is a wireless bridge because this particular controller, which is an Inalite X2, is, uh, has a built-in uh, built web server and I can access the controller via the wireless bridge uh, anywhere in my uh, in my house. It's on my network, so I can access timing and programming right from my phone or my uh, laptop. So, like I said, that's an Inalite X2 controller. Um, this is an Eberlay Design Incorporated or EDI uh, malfunction management unit. It's MMU 16LE. It's one of their uh, more recent models. I think there's a newer one, an MMU, MMU2 version, which includes a couple more flashing yellow arrow functions. Um, this particular cabinet is a TS2 Type 1. Um, there's uh, three different configurations of a NEMA TS uh, cabinet. There's a TS1, which is the old version, which used these uh, ABC ports. And there was a direct uh, wire for each uh, component in the cabinet. Uh, TS2 eliminated that by uh, including a serial bus so that everything talks to each other. That's what this cable is. It's a, uh, called an SDLC uh, cable or a synchronous data link line. Um, so that way the controller actually talks to the malfunction unit as well as the uh, detector rack through this. Uh, communication bus interface unit. 
Now down at the bottom, this is where all the wiring and the uh, switching happens. This is the back panel, or more appropriately called the terminal facility. As you can see, we've got two of these bus interface units converting the communication line to uh, live voltage to run the back panel. Um, these devices here, these are your load switches. These actually do the on off, so when the controller sends uh, data to the back panel through the bus interface unit, let's say it's telling uh, the back panel to turn phase one red on, as it is here, uh, it will output that on the street. So these are basically your on off switches based on what the controller is uh, outputting. And then there's a device here which has just two output switches on it. This is your flasher for hard flash for things like uh, power failure or if the uh, malfunction management unit has to uh, engage. This uh, is always on in the background to, uh, to uh, switch on if necessary. Um, on the field you won't see the flashing happen unless these transfer relays down here switch on which are activated by the malfunction unit. Uh, otherwise it stays on uh, all the time in case uh, it needs to be used. Um, this cabinet has uh, eight load switch outputs so it can hold up to eight uh, separate circuits or phases and then uh, at the very bottom down here there's all the field wiring for uh, the signal heads. Just above the six uh, screw terminal block are the uh, flash programming terminal blocks that uh, determines what uh, sides are flashing red and what sides are flashing yellow when uh, the cabinet comes out of a power, uh, power outage or something like that. Uh, more or less that we call that hard flash. And this terminal block is where all the communication interconnects for all the SDLC cables. So that all interconnects there. And then finally down here is a custom terminal block set up for uh, the crosswalk buttons. So all the pedestrian crosswalk buttons tie in here and then the wiring for them goes back behind the uh, the back panel. That's something that I I did because we didn't have I didn't have a uh, crosswalk button input on uh, in this cabinet, so I kind of modded my own. So that's a very brief look in the cabinet and what the uh, components do.